Hi, second graders. Welcome to a brand new week of learning. This is our reading lesson for Tuesday since we did not have school yesterday. You guys were pretty lucky and you had the day off, but we were we here. Didn't all we were day. here. Yeah. <laughs> so today we're going to be starting a brand new unit. We are in unit three of reading and we are going to be learning about some forces in nature. Ooh. Mm -hmm. We're also going to learn some new comprehension strategies of how to get our brains thinking about the text that we are reading. And so I think we should go ahead and get started. And I brought a little gift for Mrs. Grant. Ooh, what did you bring me? I brought you some pie. Oh, I love pie and I'm so hungry. Is it pumpkin pie or apple pie? Oh, okay. So it's actually not that kind of pie at all. It's a different kind of pie. It's the pie that we use when we're thinking about reading. Way to let me down. <laughs> well, you're going to get excited. I think you're going to like what we're doing this week. <laughs> the pie that I brought are in these pie pans. Little joke with the word pie. But each of the letters in pie, P-I-E, they stand for something. Yeah, in fact, they all stand for a reason or a purpose that an author chooses to write a text. Oh. Have you ever written anything before? Yeah, I've written lots of things. Oh, well, why do you like to write? Well, I, I mean, I have different reasons for writing. Uh -huh. Sometimes I write a story to like um, entertain my daughter Mia or, you know, tell a story that I wrote in my head. Can I let you know something? Yeah. The E in the word pie actually stands for entertain. Wow. It, <laughs> I know. It's one reason that authors choose to write. They want to entertain their readers. In fact, I'm going to write that on the board so we don't forget it. Okay. So we already have the E. Wow. I know. Entertain. Yeah. Entertain is just for enjoyment. We write for fun. We read for fun. So if I'm just reading a story, usually like a fiction story, a make-believe yeah. story, it's usually meant to entertain somebody mm -hmm. so exactly. that they can enjoy their time reading. Yep. Cool. Well, sometimes I write um or read i'll read something like if i want to learn about an octopus oh i gotta go and read a non-fiction text about an octopus to learn facts about it well you're not gonna believe it what that's another one of our letters well what is that <laughs> to gain information means that the reader or the author i should say wants to inform or give facts about something true wow. to the reader. So some authors choose to write a story because they want to entertain their reader. Some authors write because they want to inform their reader. So if I'm learning something, it's probably because the author wanted to inform me. Exactly. If I'm enjoying a story, it's probably because the author wanted to entertain me. Mm -hmm. You got let, it. Let me think if I can think of another reason I might read or write. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember one time I was trying to convince my teacher that she shouldn't give me any homework. Mm. So I wrote her a, re a list of all the reasons why she shouldn't give me any more homework. Well, you just hit the nail on the head. Really? Yeah, because <laughs> you use the word convince uh -huh. and authors use the word persuade. Persuade? Which means the same thing. Wow. I'm going to write the word persuade up here. What do you think that means? I think it probably means to convince or try to make somebody believe what you believe. Yeah. When you were writing and trying to get your teacher not to give as much homework, you were trying to persuade her into believing the same thing as you. Ah. Yeah. Cool. So these are three different reasons that an author would want to write. Wow. Okay. Now, they're also the same reasons as to why someone might want to read something. Do and you? I have a question. Okay. Are there any kinds of clues that I could come upon when I'm reading that might help me figure out what the author's purpose is? Oh, absolutely. If we started with the word persuade, uh -huh. I might hear things in the text like, you should, oh. or you might want to. Oh. We're going to hear words that kind of convince you to believe whatever the author believes. Oh, okay. And it's going to be opinion based. So maybe I feel that protecting the earth is really important. You should recycle. Oh, they're trying to persuade me to recycle, mm -hmm. huh? They're trying oh, to cool. convince you to do something that they're doing. In form, there might not necessarily be clue words, but you're going to find that informational text is nonfiction. 
and it's going to be filled with true facts about octopus and all kinds of animals and things that have happened in history, wow. important people. So if I'm learning from it, it's probably meant to inform me. Absolutely. Okay. And then finally, we have entertain, my favorite. You said earlier that if you're sitting there and enjoying a story, you're probably being entertained. Entertain is usually going to be a fiction story, but it doesn't have to be. If you're choosing a novel or any kind of book that you like to read, then you're being entertained. So if I have a book that has characters that are speaking mm -hmm. and like a problem and a solution that those characters go through, it's probably meant to entertain me. Absolutely. Okay. Whew, I feel really prepared yeah. with all this new information Good. to figure out the author's purpose. All right. Okay. Well, let's take a look first at the worksheet that okay. students have to do, and maybe you can go through some of the worksheet, and then when we're done, we are going to be reading a story, and we need to fill this out. Okay. So what do we need to do so, here? It's telling us that we need to read the selection, which we haven't done yet. We're going to read it with you guys in just a moment, and then we're going to complete this chart. We have to come up with two clues that helped us figure out whether the author was trying to persuade, inform, or entertain us. So let's say that the story I was reading was Little Red Riding Hood. Oh. Okay. oh a clue a might be that there were characters who mm -hmm. were speaking to each other yep. that had dialogue. And that um, maybe another clue might be that those characters, like Little Red Riding Hood, encountered a problem that she ended up solving at the end of the story and that it, it really entertained me. Those would be good clues. Therefore, I would write entertain under the author's mm. purpose. All right, so I think we should take a look at the story that we're going to read then today okay. and see if we can help students figure out what the purpose is of the story. Okay and then some reasons or some clues as to why you think okay. that. All right. All right. So let's, let's switch see. it over here. All right. All right. So I'm wondering if we, we might have to erase this, huh? Yeah, we can write it back up there when we're done reading. Yeah. All right, you wanna start reading? Sure. So the story, let's start with the genre, expository text. An expository text is a form of nonfiction. Usually, expository text um, teaches us something about <laughs> science, hint, hint, or social studies, and it has a lot of true facts, mm -hmm. and um, we usually learn something mm -hmm. from it. Uh, it looks like the title is called Magnet's Work, so we're probably going to learn a little bit about magnets. That's exciting. See what we what we find. All right, you know what I'm also seeing here are some text features. Oh yeah, nonfiction all, text. Nonfiction has a lot of text features like bold words, mm -hmm. um, like <clears throat> headings and subheadings that tell us what the next paragraphs are gonna be about. So those are some clues for me that are gonna help me figure out what this author is trying to do. All right, did you know magnets are all around you? Magnets help you do amazing things. Keep reading. See if you think magnets have surprising uses. Magnets pull. Look closely and you will see magnets can be found on a can opener. The magnet attracts or pulls the lid off of a soup can. A push or a pull is called a force. There is also a magnet in a refrigerator. It pulls the metal in the door to make a tight seal. Do you know how? All right. A magnet's force pulls objects made of metals called iron and steel. It will not pull other things. It will not pull a wooden pencil or a plastic toy. A magnet does not attract all items. Our next section is called magnets have poles. You have proved or shown that magnets can pull some things to it. Why is this true? The two ends of a magnet are its poles. Every magnet has a north pole and a south pole. Hmm. I'm wondering if I'm yeah. going to be able to read the bottom of that. That is really <laughs> an interesting problem. Oh, there we go. That's better. Almost. We might need to pull it down just a little bit okay. to get that up. Okay. All right, I'm going to continue though. But notice how she has a north and a south pole. 
unlike poles attract each other. So a north pole is unlike a south pole. Those are opposites, so opposites attract. Like poles repel each other. So have you ever used magnets and tried to push them together mm -hmm. and they won't go together? Oh, they yeah. just like repel or push away? Yep. That's because you're probably trying to connect a north pole with a north pole. Oh yeah. Or a south with a south. Mm -hmm. And magnets don't work that way. Mm -hmm. You have to get a north and a south in order for them to stick together. To stick. Mm -hmm. I bet some of our friends at home might have some toy trains like this. Uh -huh. Cause I know my son Max had a bunch of these and same thing, they uh -huh. wouldn't all go together. Yeah. You had to turn it the right way to get them yes. to stick. Have you ever played with trains that have magnets? Sometimes you try to put two train cars together, but they repel, they push away from each other. Oh, this means they push away from each other. Then you turn one of the cars around, the two cars snap together as quick as a wink. That's right, if you have played with these trains, you know it is true. When the train cars push away, two of the same poles are facing each other. However, if you put the north and the south poles together, they will snap together like the train. All right. Last two pages. Yep. All right. Our next subheading up here says magnets can be powerful. We know that magnets can move objects, but does the heaviness of an object matter? Can magnets move objects that have different weights? Yes, they can. Scientists are using magnets in new ways. People often wish they could travel at a faster speed than a train. And we have a little text box down here or a caption that says, the magnets on this train make it float over the track. Wow, isn't that pretty cool? cool? So even trains use, certain types of trains use magnets. That is really cool. There is a new train that uses powerful magnets to travel more quickly. Magnets lift the train above the track and push the train forward. The train appears to be moving as fast as lightning. Scientists have measured these train speeds. They are much faster than the trains we know. Can you imagine what magnets will help us do in the future? Wow, what a cool story. It, I learned a lot. Uh -huh. That has yeah. a lot of information, <laughs> doesn't it? Yes. All right, so we are going to take right. a look at this paper in our packet today that goes along with the story that we just read. Now, we need to come up with an idea of what we think the author's purpose is going to be. Remember, there are three choices. There is the P for persuade, and that's when they're trying to convince us of something, to believe something. We have the I for inform. And that's when the author's trying to teach us something. And we have the E for entertain. And that is when the author is giving us something that we can enjoy. So, Mrs. Grant, if you had to think about the story all together, mm -hmm. okay, what do you think the author's purpose was? I feel like it's definitely obvious that he was trying, or she, was trying to inform me. Mm -hmm. So we know that the author's purpose is to inform. So the only thing that we need to write in this box is the word inform. But now we need to think about how do we know that? Yeah. How do we know that this is what the author, this is why the author chose to write this story? Mm -hmm. How do we know they wanted us to learn something? So I'm going to start by talking about the author. Okay. okay? I know that in the story, the author um, gave facts about how magnets work. The entire beginning of the story was just talking about how the magnet worked. We talked yeah. about the North Poles and the South Poles and how they can attract and they can repel. Mm -hmm. And I know that those are true facts because there were drawings of them. I know that magnets are real. I've actually used magnets before. So I know that everything in there was a fact. Mm -hmm. Now, 
we need another clue. And if we start thinking about the next half of the story, the author kind of switched from talking about how magnets work to some like uses for magnets, right? Yeah, how are magnets used in the real world? Oh, do you remember any ways oh. that yeah, I remember them talking about how the high-speed train uses magnets. Mm. And then it makes it really fast, like lightning. So we must know that magnets are real because they're being used in the real world. Yeah. How could we write that in a sentence? Do you want to take over? Maybe yeah. we could write something <laughs> like, okay. we could write that um, magnets, let's start with the word okay. magnets, um, have real uses. Magnets? Have um, uses in the real world? Yeah. Okay. Have uses in the real world. So that story was not just meant to entertain us or to convince us to believe that magnets are real. They are real. They are. It's a fact. Yep. So it was meant to inform us or teach us about how magnets work and how they're used in the real world. Yep. Exactly. Wow. That was really awesome. So, so that's the end of the story yeah. and that's all we have to do. If you wanna add some other ideas, there mm -hmm. are other clues. If you wanted to write a fact about how magnets have a north and south pole, you could write that on here mm -hmm. if you wanted. If you wanted your clue to be something like even trains use magnets, uh -huh. you could do something like that. But understanding that the purpose of the story is to inform and there are things that you think about to get there, that's the point of our lesson today.